Hello there, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm reviewing the Stock Swoosh Show Live Trading Room 2022 year to date advanced trader results $438,649. This is with an average risk of around $2,800 per trade. So, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I like to short. We're going to go over all the ticker symbols we did so far year to date. Again, we're we're basically seven months plus into the year. There's about not quite five months left, four and a half plus. It'll be four and a half after this week. And it's been a really good year. Even though the market's been volatile, we've had gaps. We've had gaps that have had big moves. And again, if you've been following me on YouTube, you know that I only trade gaps. Most of the trades that we do are shorts. We do have some longs. Actually, we've had some we've had some longs recently, to be honest with you, but most of the trades, most of the things that we do are in fact shorts. So if you have any questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. It has been a good year, like I said. And if you are interested in trading, just so you know, you would learn my method in the Golden Gap course. That is a class where I teach my system once a month. And that is something where you'll learn how I make the picks. Like how did I make all these picks we're gonna talk about from the rating system. Every single person that's in the room has taken the class. Okay, you cannot join the room unless you've taken the class and you've learned what to do. I think it's really important. Knowledge is extremely important if you wanna trade. You will make more money that rather than just copycatting my trades if you understand what to do. Yes, you can come in the room and take the calls. Yes, I call the trades live, the entries, the exits, the stops. Yes, that's true, but you will do so much better if you understand why. While I'd love to say every single trade and every single setup is easy peasy, that's not realistic. So learning, knowledge, all of that helps. It helps you take the risk. It helps you hold something that's down until it goes up and all of the above. So it's really important to understand what to do in order to trade. So earnings season is going on currently right now. Actually, for the rest of the month, seems strange to have such good trading this summer, but actually it's earnings season and many stocks gap on earnings. So it is actually a very good time to trade. In fact, today we did TSN. Uh, that was a short, it was a nice chart, and that was an earnings gap. One of the reasons that I started trading, and again, I did one class and then I taught myself my own method because the class didn't teach me any singular method to trade or any way to trade at all, it was too much broad base. I'm very focused in the class, very focused on what I do, very targeted. But one of the reasons I decided to do this, to get into day trading and all, is because I wanted to work for myself. The mortgage industry was changing in 2007, 2008. I had done it for a long time. It was great, but until it wasn't, until it wasn't. And and you might, you might have been loving your job for a long time, and all of a sudden, now you don't. I mean, when you work for yourself, you're in control of your own destiny. You're in control of your own life. Uh, becoming independent, working for yourself is so much different than working for somebody else. And especially in the last two and a half years with COVID, I can't imagine the rules that people are instilling on people because of COVID, the restrictions, the masks, everything else. I mean, I'm so grateful that I work for myself and I will forever. I mean, so once you get a taste of freedom and independence, let me tell you, you will never, ever, ever go back. But I think it's important not to trade alone. You get the support. You get the support in the live room. Again, I make the calls, I make the picks, I say what I think of the market. All of these things are extremely important and vital to you getting through it, all right? When you're on your own, sometimes you're second guessing yourself, get the support. That's why I offer the live room. It opens Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five days a week. So here's one we did. This was, oh my gosh, it was the end of July, 728. We did love, we chunked it out. Stock closed here, gap down, dropped, fell, boom. We shorted it, got in, got out. Beautiful move, beautiful trade. Again, this was an earnings gap and it was a short. Stock price dropped. So we got the sell off and we made money in this. This is what I call the money move. Again, look at how it pitted around for the rest of the day. In and out fast. Most of the trades we do are quick. TSN was quick today too, you know? In fact, I'll do a video on that later. So fast is the key to day trading. You only got till four o'clock. 
And it's so rare that we hold a trade that long. I'm not saying I never do, I might, but it's rare. So back to the beginning of the year again, this is every ticker symbol we did this year, winners and losers, with an average risk of $2,800 per trade. You can risk less. These are trades on margin. These are not options trades. If you want to trade options, you sign up for the options newsletter. I do not call options trades in the room. While there are some people in the room that choose to do the trades as options, that's a decision that they make on their own. That is not what I'm calling in the room. Okay, just so you know, just to be clear. So January closed, full locker was break even, no trades of fifth, six was a Netflix, that was a winner, spy was a winner on the seventh, tenth was Q's was a big winner, no trades on the eleventh, Apple was break even on the twelfth. This was to start out the year. Crazy how the year started off bullish and then dropped. I mean, when you look back at the chart, like, oh my God, we haven't been back up at the highs at all. Netflix was a big winner on the thirteenth. Facebook was a winner. JPM was a big winner. Close to the seventeenth, Martin Luther King Day. Goldman Sachs was a winner on the 18th. Spy was a winner on the 18th. Well, I won't always do two things, but sometimes I will if I really like something. No trades on the 19th. Oh, maybe that was Martin Luther King. Oh no, we were closed the 17th. That was no trades. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of market holidays now that I think about it. I'm trying to think what the next one is. Labor Day. Labor Day is the next one. AA was a winner. UAL was a winner on the 20th. Netflix was a winner on the 21st. The 24th was Spy. Apple was a winner the 25th. Microsoft took two trades. First one lost, second one big winner. Sometimes I'll do a retake. MCD failed on the 27th. BA was a nice winner on the 27th. BA worked again on the 28th. Apple was a winner on the 31st. That was January. Market really slid off in February. February 1st, UPS lost. Second trade worked. PayPal was a big winner February 2nd and Facebook on February 3rd. Then Ford was a huge winner on the 4th. Babel was a winner on the 7th. Q's was a loser, then Facebook was a big winner. Apple lost, Netflix lost. Apple won, Netflix break even. PayPal lost, then PayPal was a big winner. Q's was a big winner. UAA was a winner. And then February 14th, no trade. Sometimes, sometimes there's no good gaps. I mean, it's better than losing. We just don't do anything. The Q's was a winner on the 16th and 17th. Again, we had a lot of gaps in the market this month, and they worked. They were shorts. The 18th Facebook loss. QQQ's was a big winner on the 18th. Spy loss second trade worked on the 22nd. Low was a winner on the 23rd. 24th Spy lost. Foot Locker was a winner on the 25th. BA was a winner on the 28th. Then BA was a winner to start out March, a small one. FSLR lost on March 2nd. Zoom was a winner. We've done that a couple times this year. Nice one. BA won on the 3rd. BA won on the 4th. And the SPY. Q's was a big winner on March 7th. Oh, again, we've done the market a lot this year, actually. It's day trades and options. The 8th, Q's first trade lost. Second one worked. No trades for March 9th. BA lost on March 10th. SPY lost. Q's won. March 11th off, March 14th I was off. Apple, two losers, so it just didn't work. CVX lost two. But then on the 16th we did CVX, one lost, one worked. No trades on March 17th, FDX was an easy one on the 18th. 21st, BA lost, CVX won. And then the 22nd was BA lost, CCL lost, CVX won. That, CVX, we were going long, to be honest with you, a lot this year, so those weren't shorts. Adobe was a winner on the 23rd. No trades on the 24th. Baba lost on the 25th. Q's lost on the 25th. And then we did a retake that worked. No trades March 28th. AA lost on the 29th. CVS won. Chewy was a loser on the 30th of March, and Facebook was two. Spy was a massive winner on March 30th. I remember that. I mean, we just, the market has given so many opportunities to make money this year, I can't even tell you. WBA was a winner on the 31st. QQQs won on the April 1st. April 4th was no trades. April 5th, Twitter lost, CVX lost. BA, big winner, Q's winner, and CVX lost the second retake. BA won and Spy won on April 6th. Then off on the 7th, 8th was the Q's was a winner. Then on the 11th, we did the Q's twice. The first one was a retake, second one worked. I review retakes in the class. I teach retakes in the class. It's actually something to go over on day two. April 12th, JPM was a winner. No trains 
on April 13th. So then we got into, again, this is the spring. April 14th, Wells Fargo lost Qs won two trades in the Qs on the 18th. One lost, one worked. The 19th, we had a loser in the Qs. J and J lost, then the second trade worked and the Qs worked. Netflix was a winner, AA was a winner, Verizon was a winner, and no trades on the 25th. JetBlue worked on April 26th. BA was a winner on April 27th. CAT was a winner on April 28th, and INTC was a winner on 29th. That's normally what I like to do. One, in, out, boom, in, out, done, and done. Again, if I take the first trade and I lost, I will do a retake for something else because it might not reset up. But I mean, the best days, the best weeks we ever have, we do one trade done, one trade done, one trade done. Again, I'm trying to hit a bullseye. Every time I take the trade, that's the idea. That's the whole point. That's how you make money. It's not sitting and you make money and then you take it, take it, take it, take it. No, that's how you get money back, okay? I'm very pinpoint, like trying to hit a bullseye. You're not gonna hit a bullseye all day long from 9.30 to four a million times. It's just not gonna happen. That's The odds are against you. So I put the odds in my favor to look for a high quality gap that rates 20 points or more per my 26 point rating system. That's what I look to do. And if I get that in one thing and I make money, I'm done. Okay, you set your goals accordingly to people. Whatever it is you wanna make, your risk has to uh, you know, be based on that too, okay? So then May started out, the Q's lost twice, then a big winner. CHGG was a loss and then win one, one, that was a good trade. May 5th was Lyft, that worked. Etsy was the fifth, that worked. Spy was the sixth, that worked. May 9th and 10th off, May 11th, Q's lost, Q's won. May 12th off, May 13th, Twitter lost, CVX was a winner. Twitter was a winner on the 16th. Walmart was a winner on the 17th. Target was a winner on the 18th. No trades the 19th. DE winner on the 20th. No trades the 23rd. ANF lost. Facebook lost. Facebook lost again. That, that day just didn't come together at all. Nothing was working right the 24th. 25th, we did BA loss, but a nice trade in CVX. No trades the 26th. W day lost, a big loss, and W day big winner on the 27th of May. CVX lost, buy loss, and then CVX lost in the retake on the 31st. That just didn't work. Walmart was a good one on the June 1st. This is starting out June. June 2nd, Microsoft lost. HPE, one small loser and one nice winner. Crowd lost, 2870. Apple, big winner. QQQs for 8400. That was June 3rd. Off June 6th through 8th. June 9th, the spy lost in two, and then a big winner. June 10th, QQQs was a winner. And then June 13th, Qs was a winner. No trades on the 14th and 15th. Again, if somebody doesn't rate my criteria, I'm not gonna trade. Qs was a winner. And then SPY, that was June 16th. Adobe lost, target one, no trades to 21st. Qs lost on 22nd, then I couldn't find anything else to do. UAL worked on the 23rd and no trades on the 24th. There are times where there is more opportunity in the market than others. I've found around the holidays, there is less opportunity. You have to watch it. What am I talking about holidays? Christmas, Thanksgiving, July 4th. Do you know what I mean? Save was a winner on the 27th. Nike lost, then worked. Q's was a winner on the 29th. June 30th, they'll close out the month. We did the Q's again, worked. Closed on the 1st. The 5th, the Q's, the Q's lost. No trades on the 6th and 7th. Then we came back June July 8th, SPY lost, Twitter won. Twitter was a winner on July 11th. July 12th, no trades. Dow worked on the 13th. I was off on the 14th, no trades the 15th. Uh, Goldman, 27.30, lost. 44.80 was a winner on the 18th. IBM was a winner on the 19th. IBM worked then too on the 20th. UAL was a good gap, I remember that. Then we did Meta July 22nd. First trade lost, second one worked, and we also did Snap. That worked too. Snap actually was a lot easier to do. July 25th, no trades. Walmart lost on 26, Q's won. Microsoft was a big winner on the 27th. That was a long. And there was the love on the 28th, off on the 29th, and the first. Cat lost, Q's lost, BA was a big winner. CVS was a winner on August 3rd. eBay was a winner. On August 4th, TLO was a winner on Friday, August 5th, and TSN was a winner on August 8th. So August is actually shaping up to be a good month here. We're a couple days into the month. We'll see if we can keep it up. Really just on my game here. 
So this is like the whole back a year. We're going back 12 months here. Here's where we were last August, roughly. And here's roughly where we are now. I mean, when you look at where we were from here to the previous highs, to here to here, you're like, okay, yeah, we are, we've had some gains since a year ago. But then when you look at where we were, you're like, wow, really falling off a planet. So it'll be interesting to see what the market does. We got a big day for the market this week, which is Wednesday, a big number, a CPI number. That will definitely have an effect on the market. It depends on what the number is, how the market reacts. Anyways, going over these trades, these trades are at an advanced trader risk of an average of $2,800 per trade. You take the trade, you put in the stop. So your share size will be different in every trade. Why? Because some trades might have a dollar stop. Some may have 20 cents. So then you can take more size. Do you know what I'm saying? And you also need to trade these trades on margin. You must have a margin account. People always ask me, can you trade with beginner risk? The answer is yes. Of course you can. Of course you can. So you have to think about the amount of money you have divided by how many trades you want to do a day. One, two, five is a lot. You know, you could tell the days I had difficult days where I was over trading. Two is good. Three is fine. I don't even think you need four. One is not enough. But if you decide you want to do options instead of day trades, you can. You can take the class and learn how I make the option picks too. Then you can be in the room. Actually, to be honest with you, people are in the room who are only doing options and they're on the newsletter and they did the class and they like what I hear what I have to say about things we do. There were options I called this morning. People heard what I had to say about the market in the room. It was helpful this morning. If you have a small account, you could join the room after you take the class and you could just do the trades as options if you want. So if I call something like IBM and you want to do a put in it and we do a day trade short, you could do that. You could do that or just sign up for the options newsletter. But getting back to what I was saying earlier, you know, financial freedom is very important, not just now because of the type of economic environment we're in. I think in general, you should always, always be concerned about what's going on in the world, what's going on in your world and what things can you control. You can't control the price of cheese or butter or eggs or strawberries or anything you might want to buy. You can control how much money you make if you decide to work for yourself and trade the market. It may take you time to learn. It may take you time to chunk it out, but the sooner you start, the better. Complaining and whining and wondering and waiting, I mean, it's never going to get you anywhere. Look at this now. Half the year's gone. More than half the year's over. Before you know it, it's going to be Halloween, then Thanksgiving, then Christmas, and then we're going to be ringing in the new year. This year really, I think, actually flew by, at least for me. I don't know about you, but for me. So we'll see where we're going into the future. But if you'd like to learn, there's only a couple more classes before the end of the year. The next class is in August. It's at the end of the month. It's called the Golden Gap Course. This is where I teach my strategy. It's August 27th to 28th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Class tuition is $69.99. Again, the class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Everyone pays the same price. Everyone does who signs up. And again, you have to take the class in order to join the live room. Now, if you want to do the combo, you would do the trends class on Tuesday and the Golden Gap course. You save money if you sign up for two, get two classes for $74.99. Again, this, everything's online. If you have questions, email me. If you want to sign up, you must email me. You must email me for sign up forms. They are not on the website. You can email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. It has been a good year. We've had a good start to August. I'm going to keep it up. And email me if you have questions. Have a great day, everyone.